Welcome back to r slash neighbors from hell, where people share stories about their crazy neighbors. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe to join our amazing community. And without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. The first one is titled Trespass on Farmer's Property and Set Fires? Your car will get flipped over. I would consider myself to be a pretty mellow guy. I live out in a rural countryside neighborhood where many of us are farmers. It was a nice quiet neighborhood. There were a couple of kids that lived a few streets over that were known as the problem children of the town if you will. Behind my house there is a huge field. Now my backyard is pretty big itself as the houses are spaced out pretty nicely, but my yard was divided from the giant field through a fence. However, because of how secluded our neighborhood was, it was not surprising that these kids were using the field behind the neighborhood as their hangout spot. At first I had the mindset of, they are just young adults, let kids be kids. After all, I know how wild I was in my younger days. However, these kids were starting to get on my nerves and other residents of the neighborhood as well. They were blasting music, leaving their garbage around and overall causing a disruption in our usually quiet neighborhood. I had thought about approaching them, but I thought they would stop coming to the field or find a new hangout spot. I like to see the good in people, but unfortunately these kids pushed me to my breaking point. One afternoon I was talking to my neighbor. She was upset because over the weekend the kids were partying and hanging out in the fields behind her house. She told me that when she went out into her backyard, she had discovered that the field was littered with alcohol bottles and a bunch of takeout trash. And not only that, but it had seemed that they had dumped trash over her fence and there was various food wrappers and takeout boxes in her backyard. She had spent a good while cleaning it up and was upset for obvious reasons. I decided that the next time I saw them, I would confront them and politely ask them to either behave or stop trashing the field and people's properties. But of course, things never go according to plan. At one point, the little troublemakers tried their luck as arsonists because I discovered several small fires on my property glowing bright in the night when I looked out of my window. This almost pushed me over the edge. As a matter of fact, just a couple of days later, an altercation with the group of friends led to me dumping their car down the side of the hill with my tractor. First I would like to say I know that this could have been handled a lot better, but over the last couple of months they had really been getting on my nerves and upsetting other neighbors due to their blatant carelessness and disrespect. I'm a nice person but even I have my limits. And when others cannot show simple respect for other people and their properties, well, I get pissed off. Here is what happened. It was the middle of the afternoon about 3 or 4 o'clock. I had seen them pull up into the field and was a little surprised because they were usually there later in the night. But this was the perfect opportunity to go and approach them about the whole situation. I had gone out to my backyard and walked towards the gate and was even more annoyed when I saw that they had blocked my gate with their car. I know this might not seem important, but I park all of my farm equipment near the back and use the gate to exit the yard with whatever equipment I am using. It also irritated me how once again they had zero respect for my property. They just saw it as theirs to do whatever they wanted with it. As I approached the group of friends that were not too far from my gate, I asked them if that was their car. They said yes and asked why I wanted to know. This immediately put me off, it was clear that I was the resident at this house and they were questioning why I wanted to know who was parked outside of my gate and blocking it. I had told them, nicely I might add, that they were blocking my gate and I needed to move because I was planning on moving one of my tractors. They immediately started swearing at me and told me that the field was not considered part of my house so they did not need to move. Unfortunately for them, this just ticked something off in me. So without saying anything, I unlocked my gate and turned back around to get in my tractor. And once I was in my tractor, I carefully maneuvered it in order to pick up their car. This obviously frightened them and within no time one of the guys who was shirtless for some reason started pounding on the window of the tractor. And then I drove my tractor over the edge of the small hill and rolled his car over the edge. 
I almost hate to admit it, but it was kind of satisfying seeing these kids, who had caused so much disruption and chaos in the neighborhood, get what they deserve. They had plenty of opportunities to apologize, pick up their trash and move their cat and they didn't. And even when, they were met with respect and kindness. Without saying anything to them or getting out of the tractor, I drove back into my yard with my tractor and got out, locked the gate and went back inside. Of course the police were called and I had to speak with them. There is currently an ongoing investigation and it actually looks like things are going to work out in my favor. I told the police officers the truth about what I did and the events leading up to it. I expressed my frustration to the police and had to explain to them how I politely asked them to move their car from in front of my gate. I also saw them speaking with several other neighbors so who knows what will happen in the end. I'm just really glad those douchebags got their karma. The next one is titled Grandfathered in Now and this is also a story from r slash just no HOA. We are currently still in the phase where the developer runs the HOA due to not all of the homes being built and we are in phase 1 and starting phase 2 at the time of the incident. Homeowners are not over the HOA yet and won't be for a few more years. Before moving in, having read so many stories on here, I made sure to read through all the CC and R's, rules and regulations, absolutely everything. I came into living in the HOA expecting to get bent over at some point or another and wanted to ensure all my ducks were in a row to make it so that I can either defend myself or call them out on their BS as well when needed. We get a notice that they did a special assessment as they were needing to purchase and install some of the playgrounds that had been promised to the homeowners and were finally ready to begin. But they needed more money for it so they are going to up the monthly fees for everyone and go from 30 to 100 dollars. This is expected somewhat as we were told we would eventually be paying 150 dollars monthly when all amenities are installed. Now, having read through everything, it is stated in the paperwork that we will pay for replacement and maintenance. Never anywhere does it say anything about the initial purchase and installation being covered by the homeowners. So we bring it up with the HOA aka developer and they state that no, we have to pay the bond payments to secure these items. Well, there is nothing in CC and R rules and regulations, nothing anywhere and no mention of bonds and homeowners being responsible for those anywhere. Not even in the closing documents, talking with one of my neighbors we decide to reach out to the city council and see if there is anything that can be done and said neighbor is also friends with one of the city councilmen. We go back and forth with them providing documents etc and eventually I receive an email from one of the city council members and the city attorney. They ask for my documentation I have on all of this, I gave them everything, the closing documents, everything that we were given at closing etc. A couple weeks go by and there is not really anything going but the city council and attorney are still going through things. Finally, after a little while, we get an email from the HOA management company stating Everyone in phase 1 X street addresses, your HOA fees will go up $10 to $40 monthly, everyone else that has not closed on their homes as of X date, you will have to pay $90 monthly and anyone that is in phase 1 and closed before X date will be grandfathered in and will not have to pay for any bond that is issued. I go further to ask and clarify with the HOA to ensure this transfers with ownership when we sell and it does. So that is just another selling point when that time comes. We reach out to the city council and thank them and my neighbor hears back from his friend on the council that the city attorney threatened legal action if the HOA management company and developer did not correct this as they were trying to go behind everyone's back. Our city is also pretty hard on developers to ensure that things are done correctly and according to the master plan that was originally approved. I cannot tell you how good it felt knowing that even though right now it is a small amount, I'm sure it is only going to grow but knowing that the developer now knows that they won't be able to sneak something like this by us is a pretty good feeling, being grandfathered into a lower price is nice too. 
And yeah, Ripe stars, as you can see, obviously this author definitely did his homework when it comes to HOAs and I think that is definitely a very important thing to do when you wish to live in an HOA neighborhood. You really need to know what you are getting yourself into. However, if you enjoy the stories about insane neighbors and HOAs, I would really appreciate it if you could post some star emojis in the comments and maybe even like the video if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance, your support is very much appreciated. The next one is another story from r slash just no HOA and it is titled I fought the HOA and I won. I own a condo in a small building, there are two apartments in the basement, six on the first floor including mine and four on the top floor. A few months ago I came home from vacation to find a substantial leak in my ceiling. It was not exactly pouring out but it was dripping enough that I needed to put a couple of buckets underneath. I went to the apartment upstairs and talked to the guy who lives there and neither one of us could figure out what might be causing it. There was no obvious issue that we could find. It was fairly late at night on a Sunday so the next morning I called my condo association to let them know what was going on. They sent a maintenance guy over who came into my apartment to see where the leak was and then went upstairs to check the other apartment. He pretty quickly came back and said that the issue was either a loose connection or a broken pipe behind the wall where it connects to the shower head in the apartment upstairs. It seemed as though the water had been pooling for some time before it came through my ceiling and the ceiling and the inside of the wall were both pretty wet. They were able to cut off the water to that pipe to stop the dripping and the owner upstairs got a plumber over to fix it. I filed an insurance claim for the damage to my ceiling and wall and I figured that was the end of dealing with my HOA. However, I was wrong. A couple weeks later I received a bill for $140 for plumbing repairs from my association. To me this did not make any sense since there were no repairs done to my apartment and the association did not even make the repairs to the apartment where the actual issue was. It was a private company. I was told by my association that since I had called and the issue was determined to be not in a common area, I was responsible for paying. They had not even charged the owner of the unit where the issue actually was. They told me that once the maintenance guy entered my apartment it would mean I was charged unless it was determined to be an issue in a common area. This resulted in several weeks of emails back and forth ultimately with me refusing to pay the bill until they showed me in the bylaws where I would be charged for this and also informing them that their bylaws in fact say that something like this is covered by common charges, in other words our monthly fee. They eventually stopped responding to me and I looked at my statement today to see the charge that has finally been taken off my account. I know it's not a ton of money but it is nice to be vindicated a bit on something like this. The next one is titled Don't Complain. I am a utilities worker and I have been for 25 years. This incident happened about 12 years ago. We got called out to carry out a small repair straight after working a 10 hour shift so as we were unable to go home to eat we grabbed some food on the way to the job site. We arrive on site and start carrying out a visual risk assessment and checking the other utility plans on the laptop while eating our food. Mr. Important as hell comes out to tell me to get to work and that I'm not paid to sit on my butt. Having dealt with people like this for years I completely ignore him and carry on with the laptop checks and filling out the relevant work order which is compulsory before starting any work as it is a lock of all the relevant information. For example, what time you accepted the job, what time you arrived on site, did you check the plans etc. Unbeknownst to me, Mr. Super Important has called our office to say that we have been on site for over an hour and we are sat on our butts having a picnic in the work van. Bear in mind that we only received the job 40 minutes prior to this and traveled 15 miles to get there. So it's physically impossible for us to have been enjoying our picnic for an hour. Anyway, we complete the job and head home. 
We get called into the manager's office the following day to ask what had gone on and to inform us that we had a customer complaint against us. My only response was to tell him to check the vehicle tracker and the laptop lock and he would have all his questions answered. He called a few hours later to say that he suspected it was PS and the lock proved that when Mr. Super Important said we were having a picnic that I was in fact working. Now to the sweet revenge. Approximately two weeks later we have a job on the very same street replacing the old steel water mains with new plastic pipes. As part of this work we have to cut off supply for maybe an hour or two but we always letter drop the customers to say that their supply may be interrupted between the hours of 9am and 5pm. Needless to say, Mr. Super Important had his supply cut off at exactly 9am and restored at 4.59pm. He came out multiple times asking when it would be back on and my reply each time was, did you not get the letter about the supply interruption? The rest of his neighbors were off for about 35 minutes maybe. Mr. Super Important got the full 8 hours for being a prick. And the next one is titled Christmas Malicious Compliance. About 20 years ago my wife and I had just gotten married and we rented a condo where all the windows and sliding doors faced the parking area. My wife to celebrate our first Christmas as a married couple put a white rope light on the railing on our two foot grilling area. It was a nice little gesture. That night we went out to dinner and when we came home we found a letter under our door. The letter read all holiday lights must be removed immediately from the exterior portion of the condo. Christmas or other religious lighting is against HOA policy and failure to remove can result in fines and other legal action. My wife felt horrible and I couldn't believe it. The owner of the condo had left a copy of the HOA regulations and I found a nice little loophole. Apparently they could regulate lights on the exterior balcony and grilling area but not lights inside the condo. So it was game on. I took my wife immediately to the big box hardware store and picked up two fake Christmas trees, about 2000 colored lights, a light ball and whatever holiday decoration I could find. Our condo had three windows and a sliding glass door. I filled up each one of those windows with lights crisscrossing around the inside of the perimeter of the window and one had the LED ball hanging in the center. The sliding door had the Christmas tree in full view completely covered in lights and ornaments. Also the sliding doors were full of Christmas lights, my electric bill must have tripled. When you came into the parking lot of the condo complex you saw a beacon of light full of Christmas spirit. You probably could see the condo from orbit and nothing could be said by the HOA snitch. Apparently at the next board meeting a proposed rule change was brought up to limit the amount of holiday lighting being shown through windows. It was quietly pointed out by another HOA board member that was an attorney that you probably could not regulate activities inside a person's dwelling. I moved out before next year but I never received another notice. And ripe stars with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you still cannot get enough of my content then I would highly suggest to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will soon show up in the left corner of the screen. In addition I would really appreciate it if you could not only subscribe to the channel but also turn on the bell notifications which you can do by clicking on the little bell icon right next to the subscribe button. This will help my channel tremendously and this will make sure that you don't miss any of my videos. Furthermore if you want to see additional ripe content that I don't post on YouTube then I would suggest to head on over to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more than 50 50 exclusive videos that you will not see anywhere else. Thank you so much for your amazing daily support and I hope to see you again tomorrow.